Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Music Marketing TV. I'm Dan D, and thanks for tuning in to Making Beats. Yes, we are making beats today. As you can see, I have a pre-composed beat because uh, this one took a little longer than usual. This is an episode where I show you guys, you know, lots of tips and tricks all combined into one. Show you guys how I come across uh, making melodies, bass lines, structures, pretty much everything. Okay guys? So, in this first part of video, I'm gonna show you guys my elements. Alright guys? So, let's bring it up. As you can see, I have a lot of stuff here. And we're gonna start off with pattern number one. As you can see, we got some drums happening. Uh, really dubstep, slow, you know, drums, really heavy hitting on the kicks and the snares. Um, this is what my first kick sounds like. Little thump. Then my second kick, a little bump. Right, so those two play together. I have a clap in here. This is the uh, default clap that comes with FL Studio when you... Um, when you purchase it, uh, it's a default uh, clap. When you you know start FL Studio, it just pops up with four other instruments, and I really like the sound of this one. It has a really really you know full sound clap to it, um, and then if you, if you attach reverb to it, it just sounds amazing for dubstep. Um, so yeah, I put that in there, and of course I layered a few things. I have this snare. Given that little low end of the snare, I, ha I have like, you know, three sections of the snare that I'm using. And the last part of the snare, I have addictive drums here. Got some claps, other natural sounding claps. And what's really cool about this is that every time I hit my clap, it's always different. Right? Especially if I get down to the low velocities like I am now. Right, so it's a great way to make your um, your your music production a little more interesting. Of course, humanized as well, because uh, we don't want to hear a lot of robotics happening in our tracks. So let's move on here. I have a little. Tsh this is a little something that I created. This is just a whiplash kind of whip sound. And if you're kind of wondering. I don't click all the way down, I let go and it's cutting off, it's because in my instrumental tab I have um, my envelope happening here, my ADSR, and uh, it, just, it just, you know, clears things up so I don't have to overlap and whatnot later on. Alright, so we got that, and all together my claps sound like so, alright, so it sounds really full, alright, again these are my drums. Real straight forward. All right, let's go to the next pattern. I have more addictive drums. I got a heavy hi-hat cymbal, a Zildjian new beat. This is an add-on feature. Again, every time I hit this hi-hat, it sounds different. All right, so we got a little heavy hi-hat happening. On my third pattern, I have a and count ride, also using the 24-inch Zildjian A medium. I like the sound of these uh, symbols, they're really nice. Let's move on to the next pattern here, number four. Contested number four, we have a light hi-hat. Again, using addictive drums, Zildjian, 15 inch. All right. All right, let's move on to the next pattern here. And this is where we get into the juicy stuff, all right? So, um... I've never done it like this before. I thought I'd give it a try. This takes a lot longer. Um, I'm using four of my presets, uh, my dubstep presets here. I have my roar, and it's essentially just a... Right, so it sounds like that, and, you know, the harder I hit, the faster it... Uh, the LFO goes, so if I go slow, and if I go really fast, or hit really hard, it goes as fast as tempo. And uh, you can do that by essentially linking up your filter one frequency to, um, you know, your global LFO speed, right? And you can see that it's velocity mapping. Um, if you want to check that out, 
you know, more in depth, you can find in our YouTube channel, musicmarketingtv.com, or if you're on YouTube already, just search up Music Marketing TV. All right, guys. And uh, you can check that tutorial. Really simple tutorial. Um, so, yeah, that's a pretty cool sound there. Um, one of my my own, you know, synths there, my own presets that you can find available on FL's uh, or Image Lines forum. Essentially has a chorus, some reverb, some high heating compression, right? Staircase compression, got a sub on there, and it's just a saw wave. But uh, if you take a look at uh, my Timber 1 harmonic level, you can see that it's kind of weird, right? It has a few frequencies in and out, dropping in and out, so or at least higher than the other. And it gives you that kind of modified saw wave, all right, guys? So right we go on to the next one we have my other preset here these are all my presets this is my I, 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 I hardcore dubstep um, synthesizer and uh, this is meant to be used with the you know a bit crusher essentially it sounds like that and it's just a saw wave peaked out saw wave if we take a look at my um, tem uh, timbre one harmonic level it's just you know a straight line Right, so it's really, really flat. All right, and if we go down into the low end frequencies here, you can hear that. We go on to the next one. It's my yep, yep dubstep, hardcore dubstep sound, and uh, of course everything's being done the same way. Right, and what changes my sound? I mean, it's still this. It looks the same. Right, my waveforms still look the same. The only thing that's different is if you take a look at my filter one frequency, my peak levels are all different. You can see in this one, it's a uh, ramp up harsh and then flat down and then, you know, moderate ramp up again. And if you look at my other um, preset that I have, my I uh, little sound here, I go back to my filter one frequency LFO. You can see that the pattern is reversed, so obviously changing. Uh, the sound it's kind of like backwards right so same idea there this time the effects are not the same everything's pretty much flat heating is still on there compression still on there right you can see its settings as so and um, it gives a different feel when you when you hear my melody here and uh, this bottom one here is my yeah this is my yeah yeah and you can hear that it's changing all the time I got an LFO happening, two types of LFOs. I got my LFO um, linked up to my filter one frequency, giving different harmonics. Alright, you can really hear it. Uh, my filter one frequency LFO is sort of like the other, um, yep, yep. Pretty much simpler, uh, sim, uh, similar rather. And the only difference is that I peaked it up a little at a different value, so the intensity is a little different, right? Uh, in my effects category here, I have my chorus, right, and if I take it off, it's pretty much flat down the center, put it out on two, and now you have a stereo ear candy um, synthesizer. My heating compression is backwards, going from really low to uh, really high up on the lows to really low on the highs, right, that's really hard to say. And there you go on the low end. Right, so that's pretty much it for that one. Um, and this is my melody that I came up with. Now you're probably wondering, what the? It didn't sound like that at all. And if you were figuring out how I'm doing it, I'm just basically pressing play and I'm initializing my uh, effect tricks. Right, so you can see here, as soon as I press play, it moves on and starts working. Now, if I have it off, it sounds the same. Well, it sounds as, uh, you know, I did as I showed you. Right, so that's how my melody sounds. With the Effectrix uh, Bit Crusher, I also have a tone delay on here. Um, I'll get into this further in the uh, video but essentially I'm just changing uh, the amount of bit crushing that's happening and distortion and all that good stuff all right so now it sounds really hardcore 
right? And I came up with this in uh, a very different way. Now, all I did was, let me maximize this here. I have a simple baseline here. And everything came out of this. This is the Adam and Eve of my melody here. And this is what it sounds like. Right, it's really simple. And I change it up in the octave, octave higher here. All right, so that's what I came up with. That's the kind of like you know foundation. And what you want to do is just copy and paste into each and every single you know um, synthesizer that you have. Um, if you have more, of course, you can get more intricate with it. But in this case, I'm only using four, and I'm just rotating these notes into each and every one, so not every single one is playing the same thing. And by doing that, you get this really intricate sound happening in and combination. So this is what I came up with, right? So these are the same notes. I'm just, you know, playing them on different, uh, different VSTs here, as you can see. And the pattern um, is also more intricate due to the LFO and playing them at different velocities. If I just bring up any one of these, you can see that my velocities are different here. Right, so if I bring this up to this. Right, so you can see that it becomes more intricate due to that LFO. All right, guys, and uh, that is my, you know, basic uh, dub. Well, it's not really basic, it's very intricate dubstep, hardcore dubstep synthesizer. All right, if we move on to the next pattern here, number six, I have my chords. This is what gives that R&B feel, right? So this is a really good mixture between dubstep and R&B. Just a preset found in uh, Harmer. You can go into your presets uh, bin and look under, um, you know, these different categories and choose what you like. You can find this one under keyboard, Moonlight EP, all right? I believe I tweaked it just a tad, but uh, it's essentially that preset. And I'm just using some sevens here. Um, sounds really good with the bass line, right? Now, if I move on to my next one, my seventh pattern here, I have another R&B feel um, arpeggiator. This is just an, a, a little add-on that you know makes the verse sound really nice or the chorus sound really nice it sounds a little more fuller um, it's essentially the same chords but in triad form and what I mean by that is the original chords if I uh, if I bring in those chords let me show you exactly now you can see all the chords that I took all the notes that I took out so I took out the G5 here I took out the D5 on the next chord took out the um, C5 on the next one and then put it back on the the repetition here right so you can see that I just took them out you know essentially it would be the same thing kind of like that right so be creative with those combinations there and let's go into the next pattern here I have my hard lead so this is really cool now, I have yet to use this in my structure, um, but it's good to have just in case for later on. You maybe want to do a solo. It gives you a great idea um, of the sound. All right, this is just another preset that you can find under lead. If, uh, let's see here. Lead, you go to hard lead. There it is. All right, guys. Um, and you go to the next one. We have here my little piano, spacey piano. It's the same thing as a hard lead, uh, except... A little more staccato. Really lullaby-ish, you know, um, soft sounding. Sexy, I'd guess, you know, if you want to look at it like that. Little vibrato thing happening here. Right? If you're wondering how to do those, um, you can hit your portamento or your slide buttons here. And you can see that, if I zoom in a little more, that there's a little symbol in here in the front it ramps up so you can tell what's what so these are your regular staccato notes then you have your little bends happening in there so you can also find a tutorial on that on the piano roll tools on our YouTube page okay so there you go and we also have a uh, this is my baseline for the verse and I'll show you why I have two different things right I have a hardcore intricate dubstep bass and then I have a simple bass line <laughs> one of my presets uh, essentially it's image lines uh, image and we're basing it off that it just tweaked it a little bit so it sounds 
Um, a little better for my song, my track, right? All right. So that sounds pretty cool there. Um, really heavy, you know, it's a really heavy sound, but done in a very simple way. So, you know, kind of contradicts itself, but it works with the track, right? And uh, I think that's pretty much it. I have transitions here, right? Little four on the floor, like, you know, just increases its increments. All right, so we have got that there, and that's pretty much it. So in the next episode, I'm going to show you guys... Um, how I put everything together here and then as well as mixing and uh, editing and all that cool stuff and adding on and touching up and pretty much being a producer. I'm Danny from Music Marketing TV and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Peace!